Well, it was a long journey, but a very challenging one. Um, when we arrived in, in um, when my parents arrived in Lone Pine, they were first generation, they were immigrants. So they really had to start from scratch. We were, had a large family, seven of us. So we all pitched in to build our own home and create our own restaurants. So there were, the net result was that there was a lot of, uh, of daily work just to keep up and to uh, meet our needs. There wasn't much discussion about college in my home or advanced education. My parents expected us to complete high school and to behave ourselves. So I didn't pay much attention to college prep when I was in high school, the first, the ninth and 10th grades. When I got to the 11th grade, I was passing, but I was not a stellar student and I was not on a college track. When I got my 11th grade, I had a superb English teacher, Ruth Stevens, and she ruled class with an iron hand. And she made everybody study. She didn't care if you were interested in college or not, she was gonna prepare you. As a result, after several weeks, I started paying attention in all my classes and getting the idea of excelling academically for the first time. So as a result of her influence and motivation, by the end of my junior year, I was the top student in our class and she pushed for and got me appointed to Boys State. I was the first Mexican-American boy in Lone Pine, my hometown, to, to, to go to Boys State. Boys State was a week long in Sacramento, a very exciting, a lot of political activities, and, but my cohorts were all going to college. That made a huge impression on me. In fact, a couple of them were even going to the Naval Academy. And in my book, the guy I'm standing next to actually went to class 55, 55 Dave Butterfield. Uh, so when I got back home from that experience, I, I started thinking about higher education. When I started my senior year, my high school football coach was a, had been a lieutenant in World War II in the Navy. And he uh, urged me to apply for the Naval Academy, an appointment to the Naval Academy. So I started thinking about that. And uh, that's when I discovered that I was very inadequately prepared for college. And there just wasn't enough time to make up. So with the assistance of a high school graduate who was at Annapolis, Les Hewitt, he was a midshipman, class of 52. He helped me and he kind of took on a role as my mentor in preparing. And my high school, my high school principal made a deal with me that he would uh, recommend me for appointment if I went to junior college and made the dean's list. So I enrolled in junior East Los Angeles Junior College, lived with my uncle Carlos and Aunt Sandra in East Los Angeles. And I went the whole year, but, and then I made the dean's list and we wrote the letters, but there were no appointments available in the 52. So I went back to college, but this time I lived in North Hollywood with my sister Ernestina, my oldest sister. And I attended Los Angeles City College, another outstanding junior college. So in those two years, I caught up academically and proved to myself that I could uh, perform academically at the Naval Academy. But again, there were no appointments. And this time I flunked a physical exam for an appointment. My congressman had me do that. So now I was at two years out of high school and I had flunked the exam, so I dropped out of college to work all summer and into the fall to pay for my dental work and for my college. So I returned to college, I passed my physical exam, returned to college in January of 1954 now. So in, I was back in Los Angeles City College, and in February and March, I got three appointments. I got one from my congressman, the first alternate. I got one from Vice President Nixon, who had kept me on his list. But the biggest surprise was to get a principal from the Senate Majority Leader, William Noland. So I was in such a great mood. My, my uh, Lone Pine mentor, Les Hewitt, was by this time a graduate and an Air Force flyer in Korea. And he said, drop out of school, drop out of college, just go back home and party because you're going to be locked up for four years. So I dropped out <laughs> and I broke the rule. Two, de two drops in college and you're deferment and you automatically get drafted. So I automatically got drafted and entered in the Army. 
And I said, well, I'm going to the Naval Academy. He says, fine, we'll let, we'll let you out of the Army if the Naval Academy accepts you. So in April, I went into the Army in Fort Ord as a draftee. Meanwhile, the Naval Academy accepted me academically, but they said, now you have to take a physical. So I went to Balboa Naval Hospital and I flunked the eye exam. I missed one, word, one letter. So the process, if you flunk, is you can appeal, but you have to come back to the Naval Academy for the re-exam. So it worked out that uh, I was on leave. I'd finished basic boot camp, so it, it was, I reported Got advanced. Uh, got two weeks of leave from the army to fly back to Annapolis. I caught a hop. So uh, fortunately, I passed the exam and I was sworn in to the Naval Academy in uh, June 12th. I mean July 12th with about 50 other candidates. So overall, it ended up taking me three years, <laughs> just the way it worked out. But uh, it, it all worked out for the best. I got a solid academic grounding, and even being in the army kind of got me into the military routine. So overall, it was, it was long, but it was well worth it.